I, you guys wanted to see more of what I cook. So I'm gonna show you. Here you have it. First things first, I'm cooking a purple sweet potato. Let me show you. I realized that it wasn't so complex, but um, I just popped a purple sweet potato in the oven. I love them so much. I don't eat them a lot these days because I feel like it's like an op aut 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 autumnal um, vegetable. But when I cook my purple sweet potatoes, I literally just put it in the oven on like 180 and leave it for like an hour. I guess it really depends the size. But then when it's done, I will like take it out, slice it open. It's probably started to like bubble. Honestly, the way you know it's done is like if it's exploded a little bit and if you can put like a knife in it and it's soft. Mm. I love like a little bit of flaky salt and ghee on that. But then I would always pair it with a protein because we love to pair protein with every single meal um, for blood sugar regulation, satiety, just all the things, you know? Um, so yeah, that's how that's what I do. Or that's a that's a fun thing to cook. You can also do that with like any potato, any sweet potato. Not usually a pasta girl, but Philip made this pasta with ragu and we used farro noodles from Orange Deli. It's so good. I like, I lost my mind at how good this is. I'm, I'm really into this cozy pasta meal. It's perfect for autumn. Hello! I cut my hair last week by myself. <laughs> I feel like I do this. Um, I gave myself a little bang trim because my hair was just like, I feel like I've talked about it and not doing well, but I think this is the first time I let it air dry since I gave myself my hair trim. And like, I don't, I don't think the bangs are looking the way I wanted them to. So now I'm just tucking them behind my ears. Um, same with this side. I also like cut off the bottom, like just a, a tiny bit and it's hilarious. I had like straight hair when I did it and I just brushed it and then I like literally went like this. Um, with like sharp scissors, but I'm also just more curious, like, does it show? If I went to a hairdresser, would they know I cut it myself? Or would they just like not, you know? I feel like they wouldn't know. Um, not that it matters what the hairdresser thinks, but I'm saying it like that because I'm also thinking like, my hair is probably just as happy when I do it at home versus when I go to the hairdresser. But yeah. Um, okay, it's a new week and this week, I had set aside a few weeks ago to be the week that I officially started packing up our apartment here. Um, and I have started putting stuff in boxes just over the past the weekend. And also I have been stocking up on products because I'm gonna bring my favorite stuff to Mexico City. A couple things that just came was Monk's deodorant. You can get this at Arakai in Copenhagen and like other shops online and it's an American brand. Um, but I found them through, or I found them, okay, so I knew about them, didn't really like know if it was worth getting. 
but then I bought this one like um I think like a month ago and it smells so good but this one also this is actually the one I wanted they're both so good and so unique. Like they have a really nice fragrance. And I feel like in a natural deodorant, it is nice if they have a distinct fragrance. Because maybe also part of it is like masking a bit of your own. But um, when I've been wearing this one, I really have noticed it's quite effective. So because they're like just these nice kind of biodegradable type recyclable, I guess it's recyclable. Because um, it's just like paper packaging or cardboard paper um and they're like lightweight and small i was like okay i'm definitely getting a second one because i'll be so happy to have this i also got my boda incense this is the scent i love the most it is refresh and i actually had some left in my previous box and then i got a new box it's like a nice blue color too and I just added them all to one. So now I have like a super size amount in here. And it's like also, like I'm trying to be mindful of weight and this is super lightweight, um, obviously. These are moderate. Um, and then I also got, oh, I thought I had something else. I also got a hair clip recently because my hair clip broke. I tried to get um, cellulose acetate because it's made from plants and so therefore like breaks down it's not plastic so this is my new hair clip from a uh, Copenhagen brand um and oh this is I like thought I didn't have anything over here to show you but I do I'm also drinking a tea like an herbal tea made from mint dittany and oh holy basil and i love holy basil or like tulsi is another word for it so much um and i just had lunch i showed you guys my ragu my like pasta so yummy and like i took a sip of the tea when i was eating and it had a bit more of a savory flavor because of the dittany and the type of mint i had and i was like wow it's so nice to have like a savory warm tea like more savory like you could do it with like a sage or something with food it's gonna be a new thing i'm gonna be doing more of okay i love boda i exclusively use natural fragrances essential oils um on my body and in my house like the boda incense um, yeah the boda incense and deodorant etc and i have one of these i have air and I also am obsessed with Moon, so I decided to get Moon as well because it's like small and Air lasted me, Philip gave it to me for my birthday, and Air lasted me, like it's halfway done now, so I feel like a bottle lasts like six to nine months, but I also, because they're like kind of small, like it's nice to have a couple scents to go between. So oh, this one is... Honestly, um, uh, like otherworldly, like it's so good. Like I've never smelled a smell like this and it's natural. It also is like, what a fun color. It says, come back to yourself. Um, okay. I also have some other things I have to decide if I bring or not, like I have this like well-kept essentials ingrown oil for after shaving it's just nice like wherever you shave and it's such a lovely scent um and beautiful bottle but like i think i will try to bring this because i love their products i love their brand and it's you know if you oh it smells so good i just love having like so many beautiful fully natural product scents that you could wear and have in your house uh, one of Philip's friends came over the other day or I guess the other month and he was like it smells like oh what did he say it was like your wealthy great aunt or something but like hippie great aunt maybe because like 
it wasn't like too perfumey, but like I feel like we often will have like incense or a candle. I really like my well kept candle. I've been burning that one downstairs um, over the weekend. Beeswax candles, they purify the air and like also. I guess they don't have so much of a scent, but oh, and then that mixed with like having your windows open and airing out the house, it just gives a whole feeling to your space. So yeah, I've been, I usually prioritize kind of, you know, having some nice scents um, wherever you are. Yeah, my little bangs are not making me so happy. But I also was thinking, like, if I put my hair up, maybe it looks kind of cuter. I think that I need to cut them a bit shorter, though. Oops, it cut me out as I was trying to show you my tree. Um, okay, so we moved this upstairs. It looks kind of random here, but I actually think it's such a good, it's such a cute position. So I've made this chair in, like, one of his educations. They go to this like folk high school in Denmark or folk school after high school. And so he made this there. I don't love the paint splatters, but there, it was not an option not to have the chair. And I think it had to be here as well. But I do think it's so cute with the tree and our little window. That's our dirty laundry basket. I got all these nice, when we moved, I got all these nice, um, like paper tree pulp baskets to organize things. So we have one for our laundry. We have some under our sink to organize, like in the bathroom. And then also for our like lingerie and socks and underwear on the shelf. And I think I just look on Etsy um, and I always look like eco, sustainable, or like mostly eco or environment. I think eco is the good word. Because I was going to say, maybe sustainable on Etsy could be a good keyword to look up. Um, but that's how I often find, like, house things. Obviously, like, some people will use eco or whatever. Maybe I would also use, like, compostable or biodegradable. Like, it depends what the thing is. But I will search it if I'm looking for some kitchen stuff sometimes. Or, yeah, like organizing bins, or for fabrics, obviously, like I know which fabric I want, so I can just look oops, um cotton organic cotton or hemp is a really good regenerative fabric because um it does good for the soil and the earth when it, while it grows. That's just a simple way of putting it, <laughs> um but also wool is like one of the gold standards. Wool is one of the highest frequency fabrics so you feel really good when you wear it or, or like it kind of elevates your baseline frequency. Cotton, organic cotton is like the same as your baseline frequency. They say not to wear, uh, use wool and linen at the same time. It's an interesting concept. I don't I'm not so strict with it, but I do, I, I do actually keep it in mind when, depending on like for bedding or like certain fabrics. So for working out, I've actually been trying to work out in only organic cotton because it's like same as my own frequency or merino wool, um, but it's really hard to find good athletic type clothing in those fabrics. Like good athletic, yeah. It's crazy that we work out in polyester, which is plastic extracted from the earth, which is the opposite of regenerative way of sourcing a fabric. And we wear it when we're sweating and when our pores are open and like susceptible to be kind of like having those fabric, off, not off gas, but like, uh, particles be like leaching into our skin so I really try my best not to wear polyester and like those workout fabrics but okay <laughs> my little there's my little stairwell chat for you um but okay I must go get my avocado I want to just see if there's a shop that has a, a ripe one um and then I'm gonna come back it's like raining a lot and so I'm 
or just like not even so much but just like con consistently throughout the day and so I feel like I only got one toe once so far but I feel like the best way for me to get enough kind of like movement I did a workout at home um but I, I do like to just have that walking type movement for my body and I feel like the best way is just to like oh, go a little errand get all bundled up and then go out and then come home you know like little like da -da -da. so that's my plan for today and then maybe a walk after dinner with philip we like to do that i really can't oh it's because i had my tripod on a funny angle but yeah Okay, I will see you guys soon. I'm back home and I'm making matcha in my little bowl I showed you guys before. Um, and I was laughing, or I was just like having this thought because when I make matcha, I get so scared that I'm gonna get the green on my outfit that I like almost like step back and I'm like super controlled with the way I whisk it and i also yesterday when i was eating our pasta dinner with like the red sauce i was also like i literally changed my clothes before we sat down to eat and i wondered if you guys also do that like do you dress for what you're gonna consume or prepare um i mean i guess it's not crazy because like that's why aprons exist in a way and like napkins when you tuck them up here but i feel like this is such a maybe i'm just like extra messy and i just get things everywhere but i was laughing because i put this sweater on yesterday for dinner and then i was so happy i was wearing this sweater while i was whisking the matcha just now but yeah i got three avocados i got one loose one but i've had such an issue with avocados and like thinking it's gonna be perfect. And then I open it and it's like way overripe, but it felt on the outside like it should be perfect. Um, and so <laughs> in that vein, I chose to get three. So we got some options. And like also what, what I will often do is like, if the avocado is a bit overripe, I will just freeze it and then use it in smoothies because I hate food waste. Um, and I feel like, there's no reason, like, unless it's like black, you know, and I will throw it out, but, or I'll go to the store and be like, you sold me a bad avocado. <laughs> I think I've done that. I've, I've done that more in Canada. Here, I'm not sure what the policy is. I feel like a foreigner in a, a lot of ways. I am a foreigner. I feel like a foreigner. And I haven't like gotten up the, what do you call it? I'm like distracted by someone that's like, I haven't gotten up the courage to like go and return something in store but I do think that that's fair to do um but either way yeah so I will definitely open the right ones today to make sure they're good and for my guacamole I'm gonna put okay so here's my one two three avocados this one is right feels right and then this one feels right Honestly, they could both be perfect. I'm really, fingers crossed. Then we have a lot of guacamole. And then we have a little bit of cilantro in our houseplant. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of that, or like, actually maybe like most of the leaves. It's, it's regrown, it's regrown a little bit, which is so nice. Um, oh, and then I only have one onion left. I guess, I thought I had a bunch, but I'm so happy at least I have one, because white onion is the key for the guacamole. And then can put a bit of garlic in. And then sorry, I was getting distracted by which avocado was which. And then I'm gonna put I'm just putting it over here. And then I have only whole cumin seeds, so I'm gonna grind them, some cumin seeds. And then salt and lime juice. Oh, I hope I have. Okay, I have half one. Oh, 
as a, as a woman. And some people put tomato in, sometimes I do, but I feel like it's not a priority for me today. I made it without last week and it was really nice. Sometimes tomato can be overpowering. Sometimes you just want like really avocado and like the spicy spices of the like onion and garlic and herby spices. I don't know. So that is my, that's going to be my avocado guacamole for the plantains. For the plantains. Okay. Oh, I put my plantain in the fridge. a bit yellow here so I think I want to use it today I mean I could leave it a day or two and I put it in the fridge to like have it stop ripening usually I would never put a banana or plantain in the fridge um, but I'm going to put yeah that and oh I cut it into little pieces and then I put right now I have MCT oil or coconut oil I feel like those are the best ones or avocado oil a little just a little bit in the pot I've been using the one this one um or I used this one the past two times and it was good it was from our place um and put a little bit in the bottom and then I take my little tweezers and I just flip them part way it's so good and then you can put it on like a plate so that the oil can fall off and then I sprinkle a little bit of salt on top but I highly recommend to try I think it's one of my ultimate like favorite little like snacks that I get excited for um, so yeah okay I'm gonna finish with my matcha I feel like I need to make that water a little bit hotter because I've been talking for so long yeah. Okay, now we go upstairs. Oh, we just want to turn off the light here. I mean, I'm bringing you with me because I've been a little bit chatty and maybe I have something exciting to talk about when I get up here. Very good. I really appreciate a matcha when it's like right at that 80 degree point and not colder. Obviously not hotter either, but like super fresh matcha. I feel like that's my favorite. Okay guys, it is 3.33 for me in the afternoon and that made me so happy. And I'm also filming at the same time. And I've been a bit lazy with filming the past couple of days. So it was a little bit of a like, your day is going exactly how it was meant to. Um, but yeah. Okay. I could just talk about other random stuff that I see. <laughs> but I will. I need to get some work done and then I will be back on YouTube on the camera shortly. Okay, I'm going to run like three errands and this is my little outfit. Oh my gosh, a fly. I am showing you also mostly because I got these pants. Oh, it's hard to see the waist. Um, when I was in Copenhagen last week and the are from uh, Bin Tagged. I posted it in the last vlog. This kind of like curated vintage um, designer secondhand shop and they have like, oh my gosh, let me clean, let me dust the mirror with my wool coat. Um, did I not get all the dust? 
That's a horrible thing to do. Um, but they have this little like tie that comes here. And then they have like a little like kind of adjustable hole thing. And then same on both sides. And then you just like tie it in the front. And then they, this is like Velcro, but they're so fun. And they also have um, a zipper down that back. So that's all zipper. They're a bit long. It's so cute because Philip and I both tried them and they fit both of us, um, which is like the dream. So this is my little cute and cozy, my wool jacket. Look, I have to just flipping the camera around. I have to get a new bottle for the soda stream. I have to get another plantain because I have so much guacamole. And I want to get a can of coconut milk because I have this. I used to make my own coconut yogurt all the time in Canada. And I have this um, probiotic like powder. And you need the powder of the probiotics. But like, that's the best thing to make coconut yogurt with. So I'm gonna put that powder into like a jar with a can of coconut milk and then leave it on the counter um, for like, it depends. You, you can like, so you don't wanna use a metal spoon, you use like a wooden or other um utensil bone like sometimes you know those there's those little bone spoons I'll show you. okay it's like bone or horn <laughs> but you know these like little like i feel like they have them around in a lot of places but so i'm gonna take a jar like this add the coconut yogurt sorry my phone is on an angle put this inside and then um you kind of want to cover it with like cheesecloth or a coffee filter like that you haven't used or something like that um and then try it kind of like every day and then maybe give it like three days and then you can start trying it and then fingers crossed it turns out really well i haven't tried it with that yogurt that probiotic yet um but i'm gonna make yogurt and then i have to and then I will probably also say hi to Philip. I think it could be. Hello. Okay, it's a few hours later. I'm, oh my gosh, I think my chickpeas are burning. I'm propping you up on the yogurt container. I, okay, I'm gonna get a water thing. I have a little bit of a bad habit of getting distracted while I'm cooking things. And I've never lit anything on fire, but I have definitely had some things that I've cooked that a little bit fucked the bottom of a pan. Okay, this is... Let me just attend to the beans, the chickpeas. All as well. They just need a little bit of liquid to get them a tiny bit unstuck. So like I'm just putting tea 
into my beans. But like, it's just a nice herbal, nutritive alternative to water to cook with. So I feel like it's a super okay fix. I did it earlier too. I actually cooked my chickpeas on it too. I'm drinking red clover and calendula. Calendula is really good for hydrating. I actually haven't done just those two in a combo and I really like it. Um, but beans are a little bit stuck. I'm gonna work on them to get them loose. Um, and I'm cooking the farro pasta that we used for the ragu. We decided to also cook it today. Um, and so I'm gonna have some of this, gonna mix it with pistachio pesto that I got in Greece and brought back because it looked insane. Um, the ingredients, oh, it's in Greek. Okay, but it's like, Oh, I can see part of it. Olive oil, basil, garlic, pepper, nutmeg. It's like a nice savory one. Um, this is one sardine. We're gonna either add anchovies or more sardines because I have another can. Um, this is like a can from yesterday. I just put it in a container to seal it. You can see my little sardine. Um, so yeah, we're gonna make a pasta with the farro, pistachio pesto, some chickpeas, and um, sardines and fish. They're great. I cooked them with, oh my gosh, I can't believe I left the um, fridge open. I cooked the chickpeas with oregano Marjoram and seaweed, olive oil, lots of salt. I added the olive oil closer to the end. Oh, and two bay leaves. And I tasted them and they were like really amazing. Um, so it's gonna be kind of a nice herby mix, nice protein and healthy fats from the fish. And then the combination of the farro grain in the pasta and the chickpeas also makes a perfect protein. So it's a good kind of like high protein alternative um, dinner option. And also kind of easy, like boil some pasta, get some chickpeas, add a can of fish, add a pesto or a sauce. And you're gonna have to make one. You can get a pesto from the store. Just check the ingredients to make sure they're clean. Um, but yeah. So we might add a few greens too. Like we have some greens in the fridge. Or we might just leave it simple. Sometimes like it's already kind of complicated. I just said it's simple, but it is simple, but it's already got a lot going on. So I think we'll just keep it simple, but I'm gonna end the vlog here because it's already getting a little bit long. Um, but thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed me sharing a bit of recipes. I know I didn't give you a walkthrough of everything. I can do more like live cooking, but I feel like sometimes it's just helpful to get a sense of like what people are cooking. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys soon.